Hello! Fan service. And with that out of the way, let's have an actual discussion. Rouge the Bat is for sure among the oddest Sonic characters. She is by no means the only or even first character of her stature, <laughs> but she is the most well-known. Her number of entries on various websites will prove that. Now, in the past, we've covered Zora, Argonians, and Vipers, and asked how these non-mammals have these very mammalian traits. Then we also looked into the Khajiit, who are mammals, but still exist in a hard fantasy setting, so there are still reasons and rules for why things are the way they are. But now, looking at the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise... Am I really going to spend time on explaining such a cartoony franchise? I think I am, yeah. Now, I doubt there is much in-universe lore as to why a bat has such... ...indoubtitudement, but there has to be a reason why the designers did this. Beyond fan service. I mean... Come on. And trust me, it's actually pretty interesting. So, let's get into it. So, first I wanted to know what type of bat Rouge is primarily based on, as that may lead us to some clues, so what kind of bat is Rouge based on? Maybe the Sonic fandom has figured that out already. A Mobian bat. <sighs> Alright, well what real bat is Rouge design based on? White furry head, rest of the fur is tan, or at least the rest of what we know of. Uh, wings are black, she likes to climb and get in small spaces. Hmm. Well, you'll find that most bats are black and brown. These colors help them blend in with the night sky, so white seems kind of counterintuitive. But that didn't stop the Honduran white bat. But I guess when you live in super dense jungles and you're that tiny, color doesn't matter quite as much. There's also the Sardinian long-eared bat, or the desert and brown long-eared bat. Now, other than her color, another big thing is that she doesn't have a spooky, gross, icky bat nose. Even though I do find some of those noses kinda cute. Instead, she has a generic Sonic character nose. Hmm. Uh, that could just be chalked up to being a Sonic character, but maybe there's something more to it. I mean, they didn't give this nose to every character. Could you imagine Vector with it? Kill me. So, a bat with a more generic mammal nose then, huh? And white? Well, the spotted bat has a normal enough nose, and it has white all over. Though not the face. There's also this white flying fox, a fruit bat. Flying foxes are the biggest bats, and also much more generic mammal looking in terms of bats as a whole. There's also... Budicoffer's palulated fruit bat? I can't read that word, and I keep reading it as butt f uh, but I don't think she's that because the face. Oh, but the ghost bat, also known as the false vampire bat, it is super close. The right colors in all the right areas. Nose isn't too strange, just color it black and it's the right shape. But come to think of it, I guess Sonic series noses aren't really that important. I mean, have you seen real echidna noses? And when was the last time you saw a nose on a bee? So maybe the nose isn't that important. What could be more important is the heart-shaped motif Rouge has, which of course points us to the heart-nosed bat, which really should have been my first guess because I mean, I talk about Pokemon more than anything, and there are Pokemon based on that bat specifically. It's the right colors and everything. But looking more into this, and those other bats more specifically, nothing really says, Hey! Make it sexy and give it huge bazongas! Now, some may argue that breasts alone do not make something sexualized, and I get it, I do, but we're arguing about something that humans have thought for as long as we've been humans. Obviously, symbols and ways of thinking are going to continue throughout history. In some cultures, more than others. And looking at the only other big Sonic character with such busty features, Bunny, the connection there is easy. Rabbits have long been a symbol of fertility and sex. It's why the Playboy Bunny is a thing. And so, in an anthropomorphic world, giving the Lady Bunny such features is a no-brainer. I mean, she's even dressed the part. A little bit of a Playboy Bunny there. But what's that gotta do with bats? Well, not much. In Western culture, let's look at China. 
Long before their love of bats caused a global pandemic, their love of bats was much more symbolic and has existed for thousands of years. There is evidence of this as far back as the Zhou Dynasty, 1000 BC. But it could have started even earlier than that. The it, in this case, being the concept of wufu, or the five blessings of life. These five blessings being health, wealth, long life, love of virtue, and peaceful death. In many illustrations and decorative pottery, you'll find bats being used as symbols for these. This likely being because fu also means bat. Five blessings, five bats. And the first one being a symbol of wealth, well, that already fits Rouge the Bat pretty well, being a thief always chasing after riches. But there is more to it than that. Bats are a big part of China, all of Asia really, and so are used in more symbolism than merely this though it's related. On top of all this, China saw bats as a symbol of fertility, just as humans since forever have seen exaggerated female proportions as traits of extra fertility. But the catch here is that bats are not quite the same kind of fertility. Rather, fruits, mainly peaches as well as flowers, were symbols of fertility as well. More specifically, feminine fertility, the feminine powers, the female principle, and the female reproductive parts. Whereas bats are the male equivalent. I mean, have you seen bat junk? It's very apparent and just out there. Just, ooh, flying parts. Mm -hmm. But also, it's because bats are commonly associated with fruits and flowers. Painting a bat on a fruit or a flower is in itself symbolic of sex and female fertility as a whole, though a bat by itself is male fertility and the male principle. Sometimes these five bats from Wufu would be stylized in a way that also makes a flower at the same time. After all, you can't really have fertility without both parts. Though, typically, the symbols of female fertility stand out as more powerful due to the whole womb and yeeting out humans thing. But remember how I said bats are the male equivalent of fruits and flowers, which symbolized more than just female parts, but rather feminine powers as a whole, the female principle? Bats were that too, but leaning even more so on the general masculinity or male principle part as opposed to male reproductive organs specifically. Which actually helps make the case for Rouge the Bat. So these masculine principles that bats symbolize are things like strength, cunning, and especially so, especially during China, in the olden days especially, especially, being dominant. Suddenly, Rouge the Bat having a dominatrix-inspired outfit and personality start making sense. The dominatrix is typically a woman who has reversed the traditional gender roles, especially when it comes to sexual relations. They dominate and humiliate and are usually very, very confident in doing so. They often wear leather or latex boots with high heels, show off a lot of skin, and have tight leather or latex pants and outfits. And they go hand in hand with S and M, which Rouge the Bat herself brings up in the anime. <laughs> so, uh, a Chinese sex symbol, bat on a peach or flower, that leans more heavily on the masculine side, the male principle, because it's a bat, it's the male personality traits. I guess if you put that on top of a sexy cat burglar trope that Rouge also is pulling from, you'd get a dominatrix cat burglar that is a bat. Yes? But get this, did you know that in some species of Asian fruit bat, the male lactates? Well, now you do. Lactation is the main purpose of breasts and the equivalent parts on other mammals. And in the case of some Asian fruit bats, it's not just a feminine trait. It too is a masculine trait, a male principle, as the ancient Chinese scholars would put it. So on top of making Rouge a dominatrix as a reference to the masculine symbology of the bat, you'd, al you'd also give her big breasts. And it's considered a symbolically masculine trait, too, because of the species that she is. Go figure! Animals are weird. And considering Sonic is a Japanese franchise, and the bulk of Japanese history is Quick! Quick! China's doing something! Let's do the same thing that they're doing, but better. Yeah, 
it's easy to make these connections. Over millennia, the Japanese specific symbolism of bats morphed from Wufu, five blessings, into just general good luck and happiness amongst chaos. Oh no, really? Yes, really. Bats in Japan are symbols of chaos. And Rouge the Bat is always after the Chaos Emeralds. And is a bit of a chaotic, neutral character type. Well, remember, the best character designs have a reason behind everything that they are. And historic symbolism and tropes tends to be the main reasons. So, all of that is why Rouge the Bat has those large breasts. And is why she is the way she is. Or at least, that's a theory. A hypothesis. It's dumb, I know. Realistically, someone at Sega is probably just a bat furry, but it's possible. Never stop using your noggin. <laughs>